So in the past couple of videos, we looked at a lot of new information. I want to sort of summarize the final results of our lac operon activation situation, meaning that, let's say, transcription did happen at the lac operon by giving a very small flowchart known as lac operon results. And this is the results really post-transcription. Okay, So let's imagine that we did have transcription. This would mean that we have one long, just a single, just one long mRNA um, from all three genes. Now why just one? Why not three separate RNA molecules? Because all three genes, if you remember, were right next to each other and like one, two, and three. And RNA polymerase sees one, two, and three and literally just goes to town and transcribes all of them in one single shot and thus all of them will end up in one long mRNA molecule. But now you got to remember, 1, 2, and 3 are distinct and separate proteins at the end of their sort of transcription and translation. How does that happen? Well, this distinction, this sort of separation happens because each gene within its mRNA codons and codes, so each gene has their own or is with own translation TSN start and stop codons. Stop codons. So within this long mRNA molecule, there are going to be several AUG and stop codon combinations within it that result and thus will sort of section out into three distinct genes because we have individual start and stop codons between each and uh, each of those genes. Thus, the end result would be that three distinct and unique proteins form after translation proteins after TSN, and of course these proteins are also known as enzymes, and these enzymes will be there because we see lactose in the environment. Allolactose induced their coding, their encoding into the mRNA molecule, thus transcription happened, now translation has happened, now we have the proteins. And finally, I think it's a very important question to ask yourself why. Why this sort of streamlined process to make three proteins? Well, it all goes back to the idea of prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, okay? What does that have to do with gene regulation? If prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, that means that, and you should understand, that two distinct processes, transcription and translation, TXN plus T TSN, are actually simultaneous in prokaryotes. They happen at the same exact time. So what you have to do as a prokaryote is something called consolidation. You have to consolidate. You have to work with what you have. Consolidate. Oops. Consol how do you spell this? Consolidate. You have to consolidate the process. And how do you do that? How do you consolidate transcription and translation? How about you just make or utilize an operon? Because you can consolidate means like quicken and e make easy the process. How about you just use an operon? Because an operon has one, two, and three genes right next to each other. You get one long mRNA, each with their own start and stop codons. You end up with three separate proteins because transcription and transla translation are simultaneous in prokaryotes. Thus, it makes sense to consolidate the process utilizing an operon, okay? Something that has all three genes right next to each other for a very specific lactose metabolism purpose. So those are our end results of the lac operon um, situation. Um, I'm going to clear this flowchart and sort of continue uh, by sort of entitling this the last part of this video as operon control. I just wanted to make sure we had a good understanding of what we were talking about at the end result of our operon situation. But now I want to talk about a different sort of topic known as operon control. Specifically, the idea that there are two types of controls in operons. There is negative control, and there's also positive control. The situation that we've just described, this negative control, is exemplified in the LAC operon. There are many operons, the LAC operon specifically, the one for lactose, the one that we just did, the allolactose situation, is a negative example of operon control. It's negative control, let's say. Now, why is it negative control? 
This is because in negative control, we're going to have a repressor protein, okay? There will be a repressor protein that turns off, okay? It makes sense that this is called negative for this reason. It constantly is transcribed and turns off the operon, okay? This is literally regulation in a nutshell. Repressor protein turns off operon at all times because that repressor protein, if you remember, is constitutive. Thus, we state that transcription itself only happens, absolutely only happens, when that repressor protein is what? It's no longer, it's no longer there. When that repressor protein, let's say, fails to bind, at what region does the repressor protein bind of the operon? To the operator. If the repressor protein is no longer at the operator, we will have transcription. This will not be off, this operon will actually be on. Now there are two ways to do this. There's two ways for this, let's say, failure to bind of this repressor. One of them we went over. It could be, let's say, due to an inducer. And what was the inducer that we saw in our example? If you have, let's say, for example, allolactose in the environment, because lactose is in the environment, this will bind to the allosteric site of our repressor protein, change its shape, and thus have it fail to bind to the operator, and thus have um, the operon turn on its regulation, turn on its uh, transcription, sorry. Or you could have another situation, and it's a little bit more of a um, drastic situation, that could be due to operator sequence mutation, okay? If you have a mutation in the operator sequence, this is going to directly affect the repressor protein. Because the repressor protein, remember, that's made downstream, complementarily, very nicely fits to the operator. But what if you change the sequence of the operator because of a mutation? This is actually going to cause that repressor protein to not fit. The repressor protein doesn't now fit, let's say, onto its operator region because there's just not the right fit. There's a bit of a mutation. Something in the sequence of the operator, because remember, the operator is just a DNA controlling sequence, causes the repressor protein not to fit anymore. Thus, if the repressor protein is not there, you would imagine that the genes associated with this operon are constantly on. Because in normal situations, the repressor is always there, and the repressor is always turning off the operon unless there's an inducer. But what if there's a huge mutation, or even a small mutation, that causes the repressor to just not even fit right because the operator sequence completely changes? That would mean the repressor protein would be constantly gone, thus the genes, the genes will be constantly, let's say, on in this situation, and thus they will be constantly transcribed. So that is sort of a drastic, catastrophic scenario because this would be the operon, the cell, doing this all the time, even if lactose wasn't there, simply because the RNA polymerase is no longer blocked because there is no repressor that it's fitting onto the operator region. So two ways to do negative control. Think of negative control as this idea of having the operon off at all times. Positive control, which can also be seen in the lac operon, is what we're going to be focused on for the next couple of flowcharts. Positive control can be considered the following. This is regulation, just like negative control, so positive control, let's say, positive control of the opera. This is regulation by activator proteins. What was negative control? Negative control was regulation by repressor proteins. Positive control is, activate, is regulation by activator proteins. These activator proteins will do two things. They will bind to a specific part of the DNA sequence at hand, a part of the operon, a part of this DNA sequence, and it will actually, instead of um, repressing transcription, this protein, it's an activator protein, will actually stimulate transcription. We're going to see how that happens in the next couple of flowcharts.